Hello everyone, welcome to the Fossil Preparation Lab. Uh, we process fossils from all around the world here at the Berks Fossil Preparation Lab. Fossils everywhere from Seattle to African fossils to Antarctic fossils. So I'd like to show you around, show you how we process fossils, show you some of the things that we've got in here and how the whole thing works. Fossil preparation is probably the most labor intensive part of the paleontology process. So you find the fossil in the field and it's encapsulated in a chunk of rock. It's got everything that was out in nature along with that block of rock. So you've got the adhesives and the glue that we use in the field to keep it together. You've got the cows that trampled on it. You've got the glue that glued the rocks and the grass and the bugs to the fossil. So when it comes here, it's not looking like what you see when you come through our collection or our exhibit spaces. Um, so it takes a lot of time because we're removing rock from a fossil. And obviously that rock has kept that fossil together for millions of years. It's done a wonderful job of keeping that fossil together, but it's rock. And anything we do to remove rock is going to damage a fossil. So we do a lot of our work underneath microscopes to slow us down, to see what we're doing, and to make sure that we're not damaging fossils when we do remove them for rock. To start with, we're gonna talk about what is right behind me. This is the Tufts Love Tyrannosaurus Rex pelvis. So everyone's seen the skull. Everyone knows that we have this fantastically preserved, beautiful Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. But what you might not know is there are other parts of the skeleton. Um, we found more than just the head, which is the cool part, but we also have the back end. So we've got chunks of the pelvis. The piece that's sitting right behind me is called the ilium. It's like the big fan on the top of the pelvis. We also have vertebrae, so backbones, ribs, belly ribs called gastralia, uh, a humerus, so the upper arm bone, and a beautiful scapula, so the shoulder blades. So we have a lot more of our T-Rex than just the skull, and we're still working on that here in the lab. So this is what a fossil looks like when it comes to the lab. It's in what's called a field jacket. A field jacket is burlap, plaster, um, and it wraps around the entire block of rock that includes the fossil and it protects it from vibration and protects it on the train or the car or the plane or however you get the fossil to our museum. So the first step is we've got to open it and get access to the fossil in inside. And it's, it's, again, it's a slow process. We have to be very careful. We don't want to saw into the actual fossil. And if I'm not the one who collected this, I don't know where the bone is. <laughs> so we open it very carefully and slowly using cast cutting saws. Um, if you've ever broken your arm, you'll remember the end part of the experience where they saw the cast off. It's a little terrifying, but they never cut you because they've got very specialized equipment. And this is the equipment that we use on our fossils. Safe for people, safe for dinosaurs. Um, so I use these big saws, these big cast cutting saws to saw through the layers of the jacket. Sometimes it takes an hour, sometimes it can take several hours, depending on the size of the fossil. Something this big, it took several hours just to peel the top off of because we have to saw it off in sections. We can't just peel the entire thing off very easily. Um, so this is the first thing that we get to use in the lab is a saw. So this is what our pelvis looks like after over two years of work. Let's go look at something that we've just opened and show you how we start that process. So here's a jacket of hadrosaur vertebrae that we just opened. So hadrosaurs are ductile dinosaurs. And this is one that died in Montana and was collected in Montana, I think three years ago. So we takes a while for us to get around to fossils. We collect a lot and they're big and it takes a long time to prepare them. So I've zipped the top off of this one. And this is what the paleontologists saw in the field, um, eroding out of the cliff side. They saw a bunch of brown and white bones starting to come out of the cliff. So they chopped it apart into a big block. And this is how it comes to the lab. Clearly it's broken up. There's a lot of fractures. It started eroding or weathering out of the hill. It's got adhesives on it from the field. So there's shiny bits where these shattered parts are kind of held together by our adhesives. So when I open it and I look at it and I see what was seen in the field, the first thing I need to start doing is uncovering it with a brush. I work with the gentlest tools and I work my way up. So what I'm gonna start with is just by brushing off all of this loose rubble and going through the loose rubble to see is that a piece of bone that hasn't been glued down is that all just weathering dirt? And I want to clean off this entire surface of all this loose material. And I want a solid surface, the bone and the rock that hasn't started to fall apart. That's the surface that I want to start working on. And once I have a nice, clean, solid surface, I go to a slightly stronger tool, a toothbrush and a dental pick. Again, I work slowest, weakest tool and work my way up to the harder tools. Anything that's gonna remove a rock can destroy a fossil. So I use this to slowly start chipping away at the looser rock. 
And it's actually quite effective on a lot of these Hell Creek fossils from Montana because they're in unconsolidated sandstones. You can see how this just kind of brushes away quite easily. Once I've exhausted the rock that I can pick away with this, I'm gonna move to a toothbrush and water. And that can help turn some of this rock back to mud and loosen it up and that'll help me clean a little bit further. And then after that, we turn to the big tools. We turn to our air scribes. So this is a chance to soar that we collected in Montana in 2018. Uh, you can see a lot of the bone has been uncovered. I'd say we've probably got this at 75% completion in terms of removal of rock off the top of the bones. This has been in the lab for a while, not because it's the size of a dinosaur, but because it is almost an entire skeleton of a small semi-aquatic crocodilian looking reptile. Um, part of this animal, the center of the body cavity is covered in what we call concretion or very hard rock. It's concretion, concrete, think of that sort of thing. Uh, our T-Rex pelvis has some concretion on it as well. A lot of our uh, Washington specific fossils are also found in concretion, things like whales and crabs. And the only way you're gonna remove that concrete hard rock is with an air scribe or one of these air powered tools. This is a much smaller model that I have in my hand. This isn't something that we would use like on our T-Rex pelvis. This is a little more delicate. Um, and I'm using a little more of a delicate air scribe right now because you can see I have a lot of the bone exposed and I don't want these tools anywhere near the bone because again, these are gonna destroy rock, they're gonna destroy fossil. So I wanna keep a little more of a delicate tool now that I'm closer to working with all these bones. Some other considerations with the air scribes is these are vibrating tools. So if I'm working on this rock and it's vibrating this rock, any fossils down in the rock are also vibrating. So I have to keep that in mind. These tools can be very damaging. Another thing I have to keep in mind is these will blow air out of the tip, which is very helpful because you wanna see exactly where you're working. But if you have a loose bit of fossil, it's gonna blow that away. So we use a lot of adhesives and glue to keep everything together because you can see all of these fractures and little pieces. We don't want those flying around. And then I use this very carefully and very slowly on the rock to start chipping away and removing that rock. So we've looked at three huge jackets from the Cretaceous, but a lot of what we do here at the Burke is small animals, little Cretaceous mammals, little Antarctic animals. So let's go look at a microscope. So the large majority of our fossil preparation actually happens underneath microscopes. Most of our specimens you can put underneath a microscope. Again, this is gonna improve the quality of the fossil preparation, the quality of the research, the specimen will look a lot better when it goes on display. Um, the microscope really, really is my main tool. After the microscope, my main tool are needles. Again, I keep talking about my love for weak tools. Needles are my favorite. Um, I've got a variety of needles that I use in different thicknesses, and I hand sharpen them to the point that I want underneath the microscope. Um, so right here, I've got a very small mammal skull that I've prepared um, in this last year. You can see it, that's the eyeball, the orbit. The orbit, that's the snout, the nose, it's missing. It's got a very convenient bite shape mark missing. And then the back of the skull's been missed. But this entire skull I prepared using needles underneath a microscope at higher magnification. And again, that ensures that I don't cause damage to the fossil. I can see what I'm doing. It's very easy to see the difference between a sand grain and actual fossil tissue. And I just use my needles to scrape away rock. And if I need any help, if that rock is too tough for me to scrape away with my needle, I'll use liquids like acetone, ethanol, or water to help soften that rock up a little bit. It definitely slows me down when I'm using needles and I'm using the microscope, but time isn't so much of a concern to me as the fossil safety. So one of the main things that we love to prep underneath the microscope are crab concretions. And Washington's kind of known for our marine animals being fossilized within concretion are things like whales, as well as crabs all come in this very hard concrete nodule. Uh, and the best way to prepare them, unfortunately, is with our air scribes underneath the microscope. And to quote the former preparator, Bruce Crowley, when I saw that he was prepping crabs, I told him that I was really jealous because I've never got to prep a crab before. And he looked at me and he said, they're terrible, they want to blow away. <laughs> Um, but Bruce has done a beautiful job preparing this. I don't see anything that's blown away, but if you look at our crab fossils, they've got the outside part of the shell that's in, filled with rock. So you have this very, very paper thin layer of fossil that does want to blow away. So this is what a crab concretion looks like when you are out in the field looking for crab concretions. They look like very circular rocks. You take a hammer and a chisel and you very carefully snap the rock in half. And when you do that, 
you've got a beautiful crab sitting inside that rock. And then you give it to Bruce and he puts it underneath a microscope with his air scrub and he gets to work. We have a ton of crabs from Washington and we've got fully prepared ones as well as whales on display. And if you go to the Cruising the Fossil Coastline exhibit, we've got prepped fossils that you can see. So we've talked about what it looks like to find a fossil in the field, how you extract it using plaster and burlap, how we transport it to the museum and open it with cast cutters, how we assess what our fossil looks like and we start off using gentle tools like brushes and needles. We work our way to microscopes where we use our air scribes and we use our harder tools and we use the magnification to make sure we're really protecting our fossil. And once we've removed all the rock and we've puzzled everything back together with adhesives, it's time to send the fossil away for our research and collections or to be on display at the Burke. Um, the way I like to send fossils off is in something called housing. So housing is the external structures that hold up a fossil. Our fossils came to us held together by rock. They've been held together by rock for millions of years. When you remove that rock, fossils don't like to support their own weight. I don't blame them. So what we like to do is cover them in either cradles. So this is a cradle, um, a cradle just what it sounds like. It is something that's underneath the fossil supporting its weight. And we use archival quality materials, meaning they're never going to go bad and nothing eats them. So I've got this Triceratops horn right now in a cradle made out of fiberglass, polyethylene foam, and plaster. Nothing's gonna eat it. It's never gonna decay. It's never gonna degrade. It is there to be the new support for this Triceratops horn. And now it can be handled by researchers. It can be sit in a drawer and it's not gonna roll around or get damaged. We can ship it out to researchers or it's gorgeous. I can put it on display in the window as well. So that wraps up the fossil preparation process. Everything from finding the fossil in the field to transporting it to the lab, to preparing it with our various tools and getting it ready for research and display. Um, I'm really glad I was able to show you our space. I hope you can come see it as well. And if you have any questions, let us know. Put them down in the chat.